Hey beautiful people, it's Mizko here and this is part two of the design series about design system. Hopefully you are ready to create your very first color style for your design system. Let's dive into it. Wah! All right, two disclaimers before we jump into it. First, if you haven't watched part one of this design series about design systems, make sure to gently smash that link above and watch that. It is fundamentally so important for you guys to watch that. It helps you understand the atomic design framework and that will help you understand everything that we're doing in this video. Now, second thing is, if you want access to this design system, make sure to check the link in the description. I've also left you guys a beloved coupon, so get 10 bucks off it if you really want it. Now, no time to waste. Let me walk you through exactly how to create your very first color style for your design system. There are many different ways to approach this, and because every single project is so different, some projects might require a lot of different shades of color, some might not, but this is the base and this is the foundation that I always build upon. 10 shades of gray, not 50, just 10 shades of gray, and we have five shades of every other color. Now, the importance of having more shades of gray is because the more shades you have for gray specifically, which is generally the most commonly used uh, shades in a UI design, gives you more control over creating different hierarchy on a specific page. So for example, if you have a header that is, let's just say, I don't know, uh, let's say it's blue, right? And then you wanna have like a sub nav, right? Let's just quickly do this really quickly. You can make it quite nice. And then if for some reason the client said, let's make it pop, let's make this header like three levels deep, then at least you have like a few more levels of uh, hierarchy that you can create with your grays, right? This is probably the worst example that I could ever provide you, but hopefully it helps illustrate why grays are important, okay? So it just helps you utilize different levels of gray to create more hierarchy in your UI designs. If you limit yourself to five, you're gonna come across a moment where you just need to create more grays on the fly and you'd rather be proactive with it. So with primary and secondary success, warning and error, I generally like to just keep it to five. These are more splashy colors on the UI design. So if I can limit it, it creates more consistency in all my UI designs. And that's why I've got it to five. But like I said before, it's not set in stone. So you can go ahead and add 20 shades of gray. You can add 50 shades of gray, or you can actually just go ahead and add five more shades of primary, secondary, success, whatever it might be, okay? So do whatever fits the project that you are working on. Then at the bottom, you might notice I have two shades, right? For white and black. Some designers don't like to use white and black. Sometimes I like to use white and black in a specific design. Sometimes I might realize I just need white or I just might need a shade of black. So that's why I have them included as well. I don't wanna go in and add hex codes directly to a design. I like to have everything systematic because it just makes everything more seamless. Now, you might realize another thing is with this uh, color system, why is this random 50, 100, 200, 300, 400 uh, on this design system? Now, this comes down to naming conventions. So. You just have to remember that when you, no matter what you are creating in your UI designs, a developer needs to develop it. And when they're developing these components, it could be, a, it could be an atom for a color, it could be type scale, it could be different UI components, they need to think about naming conventions to create consistency. You don't want to have naming conventions for gray, very, very, very light, and then gray, very, very light, and then gray, light, gray, gray, dark, gray, very, very dark type sort of naming convention. It just becomes very messy, really hard to scan, really hard to read. So one way is to reference an existing CSS framework. So in front-end development, CSS is cascading style sheets and this is how developers will create the vi these visuals in code. TailwindCSS.com is one of the most popular CSS frameworks. It's one of the more modern frameworks that a lot of uh, front-end developers will actually use. And they already have a naming convention which is from 50 to 900. So I'm simply adopting this naming convention and methodology in my UI designs, so I don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? And num the numbering system is just a lot more effective than using words in general, like very light. What happens if you decide to integrate a different and another shade of gray? Do you say very, very light? But what if you already have very, very light? Like how do you, how do you sort of slip it in between? And that's why numbering is effective. Now, hopefully that gives you a very quick understanding of how this is structured and why we've done it. Now we're gonna go ahead and actually create just one line because I'm gonna teach you how to fish and then you're gonna go fishing. Hold it. Now bring it back like this, look at me. 
and go when you go forward, let go at the end. Like, well, let's throw the rod in the water. All right, so example project, guys. I'm gonna quickly put down, I've put down a frame, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plan out my primary colors. So let's just quickly make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And we're gonna have five shades, right? So let's just draw this down. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's a little bit of thinking uh, along, the, on, along the way. So make sure to follow along. So what we're gonna do is, let me just quickly grab, sorry, I'm gonna quickly grab the color from here. So it's this one. Alrightio. So let's go ahead and pop our main one into here. Okay, so we've got the main brand color. Generally, your client will, will say, this is the blue for our primary color and you'll pop it in. Now, you will need to then figure out what would be the following shade. So one thing I like to do is I like to convert the hex code that I pop in into a HSB, or you can use HSL, whichever one you're comfortable with. Hue, saturation, and brightness, right? Now, what you can do is hue is adjusting the actual color, right, the hues, and this is the saturation and then this is the brightness. So you can, if you turn up no brightness, it's gonna be black, right? So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and just move the saturation down a little bit. And that will help me sort of take the color out from it and also make it a little bit lighter. Then what I like to do is I also like to just go ahead and I drop that one and reduce that color as well. So you can see it sort of gets a little bit lighter and lighter and lighter. And then obviously for this one, you can also do the same. So you turn down the saturation. Now, sometimes you might realize, oh, it starts to turn into a gray. Well, if that's the case, you can fiddle around. You can like turn down the, uh, turn down the lightness and it gives you a little bit more color. Um, instead of going straight into the grays, you use the, uh, the lightness of the color to create that, that level of separation. So feel free to do whatever you find most comfortable. If your client's already given you a color palette, feel free to just pop it in. All right, and then obviously you've got your darker shade, which will be a much darker, and you might just want to turn the darkness, uh, the brightness out, uh, down. So boom, you've got your primary colors set. Obviously, this is an example. I'm rushing through it, but I'm trying to help you guys understand how you can create your color palette. Now, now if you notice, if I click on this rectangle, everything is sort of hard coded in. It's defined by setting a, a hard hex code on the fill. What we want to do is we want to get to a point where our color palette is all defined by color styles, which means you can simply have a nice palette here, no matter what you're designing. So if I'm designing a rectangle, I don't need to paste the code in anymore. I can simply just click on this and I can reutilize whatever it might be. All right, so I can go here and I can click this. So what we want to do here is we want to start to give this a nice naming convention. So we head over to our color styles, hit the plus icon, just for example, I would normally call this primary and I would call it main and I might even say it's 500. But because I've already got some existing colors in my palette, I might just twink, uh, tinker this to primary one, okay? Just to help illustrate this example. So once you create your very first color style for your primary, you would see that it's got primary one and then it's got your main 500. Then you will go ahead and do the same for this one. Hit the plus icon, primary one, and you might call this main, Let's say uh, 400, right? Boom. And you can see that it will cascade down. Then you've got this one, go ahead. You can add primary one and you can say main and it's, let's say 300. Boom. And then you've got primary, that's good. Uh, whoops, that's, oh yeah, that's it. Cool, so primary one and then you can say main. I think it's 200, right? 200. Cool, and that's all done. And then this one might be, let's say 900 because it's all the way at the end. So let's just put, whoops, put this in. Primary one slash main, and that's, the, that's gonna be the darkest, or let's say 800, it's gonna be the second darkest, right? So now, if we go ahead and let's say, look at our buttons, you can see as you start to build out all your colors and you've got all your topography and you've got all the atoms set, which you will learn in episode one about the structuring and the hierarchy of this, then all your buttons can actually be pulling through the main primary color. So if we actually went ahead and let's just quickly grab all these buttons. I'll just quickly do this one. Bang, 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 bang. Make this all the primary, uh, this primary color. Go ahead and let's say we ever decide to change this color to, I don't know, for example, let's just change it to red. Just 
just to illustrate this or like a pink, boom. Everything in your design system will be updated. So you only have to update it once. And this is the power of a design system within Figma. So make sure to, when you are creating your design system, make sure to follow this series because we will build the atoms first. The atoms are the things, the little building blocks that create all the molecules, which is like the, a button. This button has a label and a color. And when you get the atoms right and you've defined them all well and managed in your design system, when you're creating new elements, you simply pull them out. You don't need to redefine them ever again. So hopefully you found this video extremely useful. I'm excited for you to now take the knowledge of learning how to fish and go fishing and starting to create your very own design system. Make sure if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And in the previous video, a lot of you guys were commenting and leaving your appreciation for the videos. And I really do love that. So if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to also let me know in the comments below. It really does make my day. And if you want to get access to my fully fledged out design system with a lifetime of updates, make sure to check the link in the description below and get that 10 bucks off. All right, guys, I will see you guys in another video very soon.